Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host Matt, and I'm Tyler. I've got cat in the camera, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm incognito dark zero Steve Tech Zero. He needs a few Dude. more names. I'm just saying he's yeah. he goes by a different name on every single social platform. I'm just saying, at least there are multiple personalities. Def definitely. <laughs> All right, welcome to Linux Cast, folks. This is uh, a place where we talk about Linuxy things, and uh, this week will be no different. But we're going to be doing something uh, a little bit different than normal, and that we're not talking about news this week. We're going to be talking about a topic. Uh, f we probably will talk about news again, but we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to choose one major thing to talk about, whether that's a news item of the week or something like that, or a big broad topic like we're going to do this week. And starting now, uh, well, I mean, yeah, starting technically next week, we'll be rotating hosting duties. So next week, Josh will be hosting the show um, because it'll be his turn to, to choose the topic. So that should be highly entertaining. I'm just going to sit back and just enjoy the chaos. It's going to be fun, uh, and you should definitely hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the like button, because that just helps things out very much. So if those of you watching live, uh, hit the like button. <laughs> uh, we do record Josh this. is going to be hosting? It's going to be called the Gentoo stream. <laughs> that, that, if, that's, fantastic. if that's not a Gentoo stream, oh, somebody needs to get into the chat and say, this is not a Gentoo stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the requirement of every single member in, member in the chat. If we're not talking about discuss uh, Gen two, we're not installing Gen two or doing anything with Gen two. You have to let us know. I'm gonna make it's, sure. it's a hard is requirement. That, and That's definitely cool. do file a bug report. Yeah. it is a bug. Uh, it you, is a bug. Yep, you can go to the eventual git .tuckspace .com and uh, file your bug report there. But in the meantime, guys, just remember that you can comment in the chat, and uh, even when even later. Com leave a comment on the uh, eventual video that posts up because that's called engagement. That lets Matt win. Yes. <laughs> also, <laughs> just to let you know, we do have a GitLab repository for the podcast where you should could technically go over there and file an issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You definitely should. <laughs> That'd be absolutely hilarious. I'm definitely there's definitely going to be somebody that does that from now on. Every time we do an episode, there's going to be an issue on that week's show notes that this was not a Gen Two podcast. <laughs> and when it's my turn, and when it's my turn, it's going to be KDE baby. Oh, oh yes. And, and I'm going to be like window managers. Woo. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, welcome to Link's Cast. We're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna the, the first part of the show is gonna stay the same. So, uh, what did we do this week in open source? So, Tyler, I know you've been sick, buddy, and very very busy. But I'm assuming you've at least looked at your computer once this week. Yes. Well, I've been having issues with uh, with certain programs not wanting to compile properly on Gentoo. Um, LVM, I have to turn my make ops down to ridiculously low, like J2 or 3 to get it to com successfully compile, which, you know, as Josh can attest, it makes the compile time for such a freaking large program take forever. So, uh, if LLVM could just like hop off my D, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and also network manager, uh, did not want to compile at some point this week and then just decided it would compile right i i have no idea uh, so that's a little annoying but i mean not really anything crazy going on with the linux world everything's working just fine i am technically on windows right now however that's only because i had to boot up something and i'm making a hard drive or i'm installing windows and a whole bunch of games and stuff uh for a friend uh because his hard drive ate you know bit bit the dust so i'm giving him a hard drive and he was like yeah it has to be windows you know i i did i did ask if i could like put linux on it and i i wasn't going to be an ass josh and put G gen 2 on it because that would be a i could do that but i also can't do that to somebody <laughs> who doesn't really know linux at all so. Well, if, if you knew, if you had like access to his whole desktop tower, you could set up like a Linux distribution that would hook VFIO hooks for loading up all the Windows applications. So that way, you just temporarily boot into Windows virtual machine every time you need to do something in Windows. But yeah, but he wouldn't do time that. You'd be in uh, Linux. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. Uh, oh, and before I forget, uh, Matt did mention that we did need to address 
Appar- apparently, ev- uh, a whole bunch of people commented about uh, me uh, and a puppy last week because I was over at a client's house and um, one of the puppies was going wild. Uh, I can't remember what was going on, um, but I do remember going over to the puppy and I went to go uh, spank the puppy and put her up. And uh, that that puppy Daisy is the sweetest puppy ever. However, her bark is pretty damn loud. And when I went to go smack her booty, uh, she got real nervous. And that bark went up like 18 octaves. <laughs> so if, if anyone <laughs> heard that or anything, the puppy is completely fine. I did not hurt the puppy one bit. And you might have been able to hear it in the background. Me go, what we the what was it. that? Because <laughs> after she did like, because, you know, I was holding her and like, I mean, I like I slapped her as, as about as hard as I'll slap like my hand right here. Like. Not hard at all. And her her bark went up like <laughs> I was like, what the hell was that? And put her up. But yeah, the puppy's fine. Uh and also uh the other dog I was watching is also fine. Um the only dog that's got hurt this week would be my grandfather's dog. And uh he started a fight with Buddy and my dog Buddy tore his ass up. <laughs> they fought for like a while. <laughs> My grandmother was so worried. I'm like, yeah, they'll be fine. They were fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so but, it turns out Tyler did not, in fact, murder the puppy, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> the, the number no. of people who asked if you murdered the puppy um, <laughs> was more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Just for context, I'm going back over tonight to watch the puppy for like uh, like a couple hours while they while their owners go out for dinner. Uh, trust me, the puppy is just fine, more than happy. Uh, yeah, doing good. Uh, I have been, th- th- that is one thing that I've been doing a lot of is I've been watching a lot of puppies this week and o- over the past couple of days I've gotten sick and dealing with certain puppies that are extremely high energy while you're not feeling too great, possibly having like horrific diarrhea is not fun at all, at all. Because I've, I've, my sister's got one puppy. We call her Stinky. This dog, if like if I have to go to the bathroom and like I'm not feeling great and I got like I gotta make it there, that dog. So I was I was sitting in there not feeling good on the toilet, and this dog was practically doing laps on the walls while I was in there. I'm like, could you please leave me alone? <laughs> I'm not feeling good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I've been watching a lot of puppies. Mm, it's been puppies. good puppies are great all right steve what have you been up to this week okay gonna make you i already mentioned it Uh, i was messing with not messing i am trying to see how long i last uh, on open suza humble drugs thing uh tumbleweed if you're an american you see tumbleweed burn it kill it Get rid of it. Okay. It's an invasive species. It is. Okay. Okay, drugs, basically. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, with DistroBox, I have Arch in DistroBox, I have uh, uh, Debian 12 in DistroBox, and I have Hannah Montana Linux in DistroBox. Oh, don't ask me why I have Hannah Montana. Uh, uh, I just do. Uh, the experience lasted 35 minutes, and now the hard drive is right here. Back on zero Linux, uh, but I'm gonna go back to it from time to time. I have something to tinker with because I finally now know what the correct expression is. Thank you, Alex, if you're watching. Uh, it's zero Linux is now feature complete. I keep saying done. People think, oh, it's finished. No more zero Linux. I'm like, well, that's the expression I know. The correct expression is feature complete. But as a last feature that I'm going to offer the users on Christmas, I've been working on off and on because I'm on vacation, supposedly, is uh, you know, I stole, uh, not stole, but I bu- took uh, GPL license V3 and I talked to the uh, one of the developers. Uh, I took the uh, Manjaro settings manager, with that, that, the one that has the uh, <coughs> kernel updater thing, 
uh, I took that and I want to try to implement it in Zero Linux, just the kernel manager, not the whole settings manager. That will be the last so-called feature in Zero Linux. And after that, it's going to be uh, bug fixes and maintenance mode, basically. It's, in, it's going to be in maintenance mode for the foreseeable future. Uh, because right now, uh, I got gifted a, a ticket to go to Dubai. So I'm going to rattle some, uh, some of my old contacts to see if I can find a job. Because this here old man needs some moolah to live. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, and selling zero Linux, uh, well, not selling, basically get it, uh, relying on donations for zero Linux is not paying them bill. So, uh, I already, I will thank each and everyone that showed support whenever they could. Uh, things are getting bad that to the point where we're currently suffering a two week, uh, long intermittent power outage, very long power outages. So to be on this podcast, I had to pay the generator, uh, the, the generator owner, fifty bucks for four hours of extra power, uh, just in case we go over. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, Linux goes, I've been really, really, really delving into DistroBox. Isn't it not wonderful? On the, not on this device, on the Steam Deck. <laughs> on the Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah. Steam Deck. On lit, Zero dude. Linux. Uh, yeah, on Zero Linux on the Steam Deck. That's what I use in, in, in the office downstairs. So um, it's a wonderful experience if I knew how to use it. But so far, I uh, it took me four hours to get it installed. So uh, yeah, because uh, pseudo Pac-Man da- space S dash S uh, thingy uh, distro box didn't work. Uh, and then when I, uh, when I got it to install, uh, I couldn't install any uh, container. I tried Arch, I tried OpenSUSE, I tried Debian, I tried every one of them. It kept failing, whatever reason. It kept saying some weird error. Uh, I figured out that it's a permission issue, some whatever reason. So I had to enable the unsafe way of making it read right. Mm. That's weird. I've never uh-huh. had that experience at all. I'm using right now Vivaldi on OpenSUSE, but it's actually running on Arch. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like yeah, inception. it's 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 like Inception. That's why I'm trying. That's why I'm trying it. It's because you keep saying I'm using this from there, this from there, but I'm still on OpenSUSE. I'm like, uh, okay, I need to try this, but on the Steam Deck, it's failing. So, and I don't want to mess with my main system. I swore this system I'm not going to restore for as long as. Possible, maybe I'm 10, 15 years. One hundred percent positive that the reason why you're having permission issues is because you're on the Steam Deck. I think it's because of a immutable file system. One hundred percent positive. Probably, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe I don't know, but I don't want to mess with this system unless I uh, I install. Uh, like I said, uh, now I have in, uh, Open Sousa Tumbleweed on here, but I could replace it with Arch with zero Linux, basically. And uh, ha- have a mess around with that because on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, I don't know this the zipper thingy. It's weirding me, weirding me out. It, it makes me. It's making me feel like all of a sudden I switch to Fedora. Well, those two things have nothing to do with each other. Than they both install. They RPM. look the same. They they look the same. Like uh, the look of them, the way they install packages in terminal, they look the same. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little. All right, Josh, what have you been do- up to this week? Uh, so this week I've not been doing anything with Linux because I've been uh, messing around with uh, TrueNAS Core on the uh, work servers as for like our for our dedicated NAS at work, and I've been exper- experimenting and playing around with that. I'm still not I'm still not comfortable at all with ZFS. I still have no idea what's going on with it. <laughs> Nobody knows what ZFS is. I think it's so complicated. Yeah, so uh, we're we're messing around with that with that because you know uh, I I managed to get a hold of some guy from uh, this this company that's up in Michigan. You might you might have seen them on like YouTube channel. They're, they're, his name is Tom Lawrence. Uh, I might have contracted him, but Tom uh, we'll, we'll find Tom out. Lawrence? Who's Tom Lawrence? Uh, Lawrence Information Systems. He he's another YouTuber that posts a bunch of videos about PF Sense and TrueNAS. Oh, never heard of him, Josh. I don't I don't want to like steer your you know 
your week off topic, but I do just have to point out you're sipping drank from Distrotude's mug. Yep. You're wearing a Linux Fest shirt. Yep. And there is uh, quite a bit of Linux, you know, stuff, stuff going on in the back, mainly that yep. Intel Arc card, like back, back there. Yeah. You know? yeah. One of the. Uh, so I just wanted to say, for one, I notice what's going on. I notice you repping over there. And also, uh, is your Arc GPU one of the ones that got caught up in all that? Um, uh, oh, shit. There's a, uh, what is it? Nose bleed thingy? No, there's a, um, a vulnerability in some Intel Arc CP or GPUs. Uh, like this, I think it's like the 780 or I can't remember what it is. Uh, I saw a YouTube short talking about it. Um, but it's only it's only Intel Arc GPUs of a certain few models in uh, between like December and like January of a certain time frame or something uh, like that. It was between October and December of 2022, which uh, mine, okay, mine yeah. is from that era. Yes. Uh, well, that said, that said, I've been flashing beta versions of firmware provided by Intel. Uh, onto it, so I don't think I'm actually susceptible to it. But I, at the same time, because I have barely been at basically my house the entire week, I have no idea. All right, well, just look if there's anything DDoS related in the news, just know Josh was part of it. Okay, yeah, it was an inside job. <laughs> 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 that's definitely gonna happen. <laughs> All right, so. Let's see, what if, it seems like I probably could have been thinking about what I was doing this week while you guys were talking, but to be honest with you, it's just been another one of those weeks where I've just been working like crazy. I've edited like 150,000 words this week. It has been one hell of a week at work, but I've been messing so you're around. you're basically a writer? I'm an editor now. I used to be oh. a writer. Um, that's, I, I kind of got promoted a few years ago, so I've been doing the write, the editing thing for quite a while now. It's a, it's not as fun as writing to be it, for the, just some inside baseball guys. If you ever have the opportunity to go from the writing part of the team to the editing part of them, don't take it. Just don't. It's much, much easier to mess around with your own writing and do the whole spell check thing on your own stuff. than have to deal with other people who don't know how to use spell check. Don't understand that the, the, there are difference between the words, you know, there, there, and there. Um, also cool. uh, affect and effect you know e versus a right they, they yep. don't know the difference between those and it doesn't some of the people that i work with and i, I really shouldn't be saying this publicly but i don't give i don't give a shit um it doesn't matter how many times you tell them that there's a difference between effect with an a and an effect with an e they'll still use it wrong every single time <laughs> like every single time like i even sent this one guy uh, a link to grammar girl like there's a, like a grammar girl website <laughs> and, and it just she, the, the lady just explains exactly when you're supposed to use it and like no no still completely uses it uh completely diff uh, differently every time it's like it's not even consistent like it, it's not great anyways never be an editor for other people it's horrible <laughs> um because english people don't know how to speak to type in write in english it's just not something anybody knows how to do all right anyways <laughs> you, you can tell that i've been triggered a little bit this week <laughs> it's, been, it's been it's been it's been a week anyways i've been other than on, on linux on that side of the the thing i've been working on a little bit of my uh debian 12 review i've had debian installed on a, on an alternative hard drive on my main machine and on a, on a laptop that i use every day and other than that that's i've been just messing around with it one thing i will tell you guys this is that if you ever want to just have a distribution that just kind of sits there in the background and never needs an update use debian because the debian on my main machine has gotten logged into basically since i installed it like three months ago i did an update and i had like 12 updates i mean <laughs> it's debian stable and nothing was updated it was like crazy um so if you ever need a distribution where you don't need to update it 
definitely use uh, Debian. Also, on the other on the other side of that, OpenSUSE this week pushed a a, a, a snapshot through to Tumbleweed. Three thousand packages in that update. <laughs> Yay, GCC! Yeah, it was GCC. <laughs> <laughs> like the entire GCC stack, uh, and and add on top of that, Haskell updated this week. So there was every single Haskell package was was also updated, all in that same stack. And I'm, I'm maybe it might have been the update previous to that, but Python also updated this week. So I've had a lot of updates come through OpenSUSE this week. Not a single problem. It's just updated, rebooted, went right on with everything. So OpenSUSE yeah, for, for the win. Uh, I have uh, 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 I I well I updated you know when you since uh, OpenSUSE is tumbleweed is rolling um did have quite a few updates at after install uh, well not after install but after a while and uh, yeah it just reboots and it's just fine until something goes wrong and we never know when that will happen it's the same with Arch. It works until it doesn't. Yeah. You could go the Gentoo route and just know LLVM and you know network manager are gonna explode. You don't need network manager. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. That's what I've been told by multiple people. I don't like that answer. What I, I like thought, network manager. <laughs> what I thought you were gonna say was that you could just use Gentoo and just assume that everything is going to go wrong always. <laughs> I mean I just use system D so uh it's fine. What do you mean you just use system D? To... System D network D. What? You didn't know that was a thing? No. <laughs> so system D literally does everything. Tyler, Wait, system D it? has like its own little network okay. manager? System yeah. D is my network manager. It's my it's my boot manager. It's your NIT system. <laughs> it's yeah, it's my NIT system. It's my cron replacement. It it does a lot of stuff for me nowadays. You said I think I've caught D? on a rabbit hole. But, yeah, uh, system D network D. System D also does Pam stuff now, and they're 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 they did a talk like two week two week two uh, years ago where they were going to replace. They were talking about securing the home directory as well, something about that. So System D is going to get bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, System D Home D, but however, System D Home D is not replacing your home directory; it's managing the home directory. Well, it's to, it's to solve the problem where like everyone had access to all the home directories or something like that. Like, it was a permissions yeah, uh, thing, right? Well, right now, right now, the way that it is that a lot of distros are still giving uh, re read permissions across multiple users on the home directory, and uh, system that's what how it's managed by default. The system D home D does does not let that happen. I remember the talk. Yeah. It was like t it was like two years ago or something like that yeah, when they were first it discussing also, it. It also allows the home directory to be just straight up portable, so you can carry around your uh, entire home directory on a USB flash disk. And just plug it into any computer and just log in. Yeah, I do remember vaguely that people were freaking out about it. I don't really remember of what course. the controversy was. Anyways, guys, half an hour in. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's there's, fine. there's no way we're making it to 45 minutes. Damn it! All right. Anyways, it's okay. We should have known that was going to happen. So. The way this is going to work, we have a topic that we're going to talk about, and uh, we're going to, I'm assuming we'll have tangents like we always do. Of course. You know, it just happens. So this week's topic is in the form of a question. Is Linux really about choice? So I've seen several Linux YouTubers talk about how Linux really isn't about choice. And I've also heard from many of the immutable guys how, because one of the chief complaints against immutable distros is that it takes away the choice of the you know, the user to be able to have full control over their, you know, root file system and everything, right? So, the one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this was because this is something that I think we're going to be talking about quite a bit o over the course of the next few years as immutable distros become more of a thing. So... I think that okay. all everybody has this idea that Linux is about choice because you know there's a lot of distros, there's you know a lot of different init systems, there's you know different ways you can connect to the network that Tyler just learned about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so um, uh, the argument that Linux is not about choice it has never really set 
well with me because it doesn't make much sense. So I thought we could discuss this. I'll make it make sense to you. I'll make it make sense. All right. Well, you want to. Steve has been chomping at the bit. So let's let Steve say this. Of course, the Arch Linux user has an opinion. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Go ahead, Steve. Take us away. Is Linux really about choice? It is. Yes, it is about choice. But. And that comes with an asterisk the size of Mars. Uh, it's about choice, but damn you and your choice. If you keep your choice to yourself, you're good. The moment you share it publicly, damn you and your choice. That's actually pretty much what I was going to say. I was like, yeah, it's about choice, except the choice to bully whoever made the wrong choice that you didn't make. Exactly. Yeah. Wherever you go and yeah. wherever you share... Your choices, they're going to make you feel, they're going to make you, they're going to belittle you and make you feel so bad for making the choices you make. Yeah, it's that's what, that, that's why me and Josh became such good friends. We would meet up late at night and we'd be like, dude, who are we going to bully today because they are not using Gen 2? And, yeah, but it is know, about We went choice. off on adventures. It is about choice. We are free to choose whatever we want. We have so many choices. Users have so many to, uh, distros to, uh, to choose from. They have so many post-install scripts that they can modify and uh, 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 to, their, to, to their liking and install and use and whatever. They can pick and choose at everything. But too, sometimes too much choice is chaos. That's why, for example, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Zero Linux for a sec. Okay. Uh, I'm the maintainer, so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, just remember, you... person that's typing up the email right now, he apologized ahead of hand. Ahead of hand. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we use Hicks Law. Less is more. So I'm not saying no choice at all, but not as many choices as we have today. It's becoming overwhelming. Like I'm, uh, uh, zero Linux will uh, has a lifespan. It will disappear at some point, and it'll be one less choice that's gonna confuse users. I just created zero Linux for me. I didn't create it for for all the people out there, but people liked it, so I put it out there. So you have a lot of choices. It's all about choice. But please, for God's sake, don't share pub- your choices publicly, because at the moment you do, you're gonna get lambasted by uh, and belittled by users telling you oh you made the wrong choice you should have chosen that that's a hundred times better this is a thousand times better oh you're doing it all wrong you you're an idiot you're doing it all wrong welcome to the linux world people unfortunately this is what it is this is how it is now hopefully it'll get better in the future but keep your choices to yourself don't publicly discuss them on uh, especially on uh, on the distros community, because uh, uh, like for zero Linux, it's a dead server, so you can discuss your choices, but nobody's gonna <laughs> care. <laughs> so it's a desert; it's dead. You can discuss as much as you want, but on active servers, uh, I went. I went on. I'll give you an example. I went on the Chris Titus Tech Discord because we have a thing happening in, uh, next week. Uh, but I went on his Discord. I mentioned my distro. And the guy went to my website and he was like, boo hoo, false advertising. Boo hoo, he chose KDE. Boo hoo, he chose XFCE. Boo hoo, this. Boo hoo, that. He didn't even install Zero Linux. He was just judging it by looking at the website. Sorry, guys. It's about choice, but keep the choices to yourself. You don't keep them to yourself. You you have only one person to blame for 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 being lambasted. It's yourself. That's what I gotta say about. It. I don't Not give very a, long. I don't give a shit if people judge me for my choices when it comes to Linux. Like yeah, you you but new users who are uh, who have heard so many good things about Linux and uh, so many. Uh, so many good things about Linux. They come, they install the distro that people have been talking so good about. They they go to the community of that distro. They get lambasted. I'm not talking about you, uh, Groucho. 
I'm talking about the new users out there who want to experience Linux for the first time. I'm telling them, I'm, I'm just warning them. For the people who are already on Linux and who are already already been there, already bit the bullet and they already got lambasted. Well, I don't think this is even a Linux thing. Like, I mean, if, if you go, like, let's say you go buy a MacBook and you no. go on the internet and you tell people you got a MacBook, they're going to be like, what the fuck? Then you, then you tell them I went tell and it to, a Windows you're telling PC. It, if you're telling they're going to be like, what telling, the fuck? If you're telling it to <laughs> Linux people, yes. No, you're no, I'm it. talking about just online. You can go anywhere online and be like, I switched from a Windows PC to a MacBook. There's going to be a whole bunch of people who are like, why the hell did you do that? And then you could go vice versa. You went from Mac to, to Windows. And people are going to be like, what the speaking, hell? Speaking Josh, of laptops Josh has, a, has a prop. <laughs> I have a prop. Uh, it's what been so it? long since I've actually put out a prop on something. So this here is a System76 laptop. It's, it's a uh -huh. 2019 Lemur Pro. I bought it. I posted about it on the internet. You know what the very first response I got? You're... No, it's just a Clevo computer. Oh, I, ju I just thought I commented. <laughs> <laughs> we are so getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get commented? He meant happy, by the way, okay? He, he meant happy. <laughs> no, that's like... All the very first comment that I got was that it's just a Clevo PC. You can buy them anywhere. I'm like, well, yes and no. And, but he's just like, no, it's just a Clevo. It's just a Clevo. It's just a Clevo. And I'm like, okay, well, fine then. I don't block people, but I'll just leave this conversation and I look at it, look at it anymore. <laughs> well, also, I mean, when it comes to computers, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense the way that people get like all upset about it because most people can't, well, I mean, shit most of us can't afford to go out and buy a laptop you know twice three times a year so when you get a laptop it's normally like it's kind of a big deal so you spend a lot of time thinking about what you're going to get yeah yeah five six and, years minimum yeah and and like i don't know it's it's one of those things where when when it's such a big purchase um what someone will choose especially nowadays is You've got so many different options. The odds that what you want is exactly what someone else wants is probably zero. Because, I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> there's so many laptops. The framework laptops are now out. You, yeah, you can have please. so many choices for well, laptops. The, the thing about lap, So the reason why I brought up the laptop is because, uh, for me, the way that I see hardware is much like uh, people that argue that uh, it's basically the same argument as Steve's argument. When it comes to zero Linux, where it's just like he looked at he he had, he posted about it on a Discord channel. Somebody went to the website and just started judging it. They didn't even install it. They didn't try it. They never looked at it. I bet you that they probably just installed Arch and installed the Arch Titus script, and I've been running that for a couple of years now because you know that's what that entire community is. It's just like what whatever Chris, Chris Titus is running for his Linux Linux distro. But uh, yeah. the the way that I see it is just like no matter what you do, it's just like people people are going to. You give an opinion, and, uh, you know, they're just going... And the the opinion of... The negative opinion is just so much easier to give out than anything yeah. else. Well, yeah. also, well, because also, also... And the condescending type of... Uh, yeah. Condescending type of opinions, too. Yeah, Tyler, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just saying, uh, with those... Uh, with, with those negative opinions and everything, uh, the reason they're definitely easier to dish out is because for you to really sing something's praises that means you had to have owned it or at least used it for a while and yeah. it's much easier to just be like i'm not gonna fucking use that it looks like trash because it doesn't cost you anything and it's super easy to say it's like no i'm not interested yeah. like i i was I, i'm i wasn't immune i wasn't immune to that and i still aren't i'm not immune like i tease uh groucho over here uh that uh, guys, it's just a joke. I'm not. We're messing around. I don't mean he's a Groucho. It's just a brotherly joke. Uh, but uh, it's like, what's I gonna say? God, what was Alzheimer's I saying? Alzheimer's is, is what happened there. I actually don't know. To be honest, I distracted myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get too bad to fill with a cigarette. I, I just distracted. remembered. Like. Uh, uh, I, I tease Groucho over here about w, WM's fucking. 
they don't suck. And I never mean that, literally. I will never hate something I never tried. I just, it's, I'm judging it for, I'm judging all WMs from what I'm seeing on YouTube. And I know my capabilities, my own capabilities. And I know that they're, in fact, not made for me. I don't like to mess with config files. So as soon as you tell me you need to mess with a config file, I say, uh -oh, You're going to no. love NixOS. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't really mean that I hate what I say I hate. I just, I just know what my limits are. And I, I found the right desktop environment for me. Uh, or both me yes it's gnome and kde both of them they're both for me they do what uh, they give me what i need when i need it without us without anything well okay kde with a few fusses because KDE, <laughs> uh, KDE, kde is like uh, uh, the girlfriend that will not sit still and that who constantly has demands no, it's like your, your girlfriend who's doing meth and she's constantly <laughs> running around the house trying to do something. Yeah, but because she's your girlfriend, you don't leave her. Every, every, exactly. Uh, you every, love her. Every once in a while, the house just blow, blows up for no reason. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Gnome is, uh, Gnome is like the girlfriend uh, that is too good, uh, who is too good to be true. No, 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 no. Well, and she's Gnome, also very uh, controlling. Uh, uh, you're starting to fall into the, uh, Don't fall into it. Gnome is uh, the Catholic girlfriend who's waiting till marriage. Okay? Well, if, yeah, the, and she, uh, she has that. a book yeah. with her at all times. Very, she's like, very strict, uh, very strict oh, upbringing, no. has the, 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 very, the Protestant par parents or something. No, no, no. You're, you saying, you're, you're, speaking, you're speaking, no. You want something worse? It's the orthodox girl that you want to marry. <laughs> because the orthodox, you know what orthodox means. Orthodox means very strict. And traditional. Traditional yep. by the book. So I am orthodox, by the way. So, so. this <laughs> conversation went in a completely different direction no, than what but, I thought it was going to be. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to drop this link here in the chat here, first of all. It, oh, it, shit. It, it's called Is Linux About Choice? XYZ. And uh, oh. they, raise, they raise several good good opinions on various things so this uh, is your it, website this is not my website this is somebody else's website i don't know whose website this is but credit to the person that made this because he did an all right job <laughs> okay. all right job okay so okay all right job okay uh, mm -hmm. but anyways what this website is is just explaining exactly how much choice you actually have in linux now uh, first of all it clarifies that linux is just a kernel you have no choice uh, as to which kernel you're running if you're running linux because you there is only one linux that's trademarked for a reason so there's only one linux there is different variations of Linux, but at the end of the day, it's all Linux. Pedantic bullshit, but go ahead. <laughs> yep. And then you have... I was going to say that. <laughs> you have at least seven desktop environments, So, and uh, you, can't, you can't easily migrate from one desktop environment to another without completely, remove, without completely removing the previous desktop environment. So as soon as you install a desktop environment, you're more or less stuck with it, with some caveats. Uh, there's an ecosystem of applications that that uh, work better with some some desktop environments than others. So like uh, using GTK applications in KDE or KDE applications in your GNOME environment. Uh, and then uh, the attempts the attempts to uh, just collect everything under the free desktop standard umbrella, which by the way says the proper package it says that the only official packaging format is RPM. Basically, only like four distros actually care about that. Uh, and then, you know, we got choices about applications, choice itself, politics, like, the so system, basically, trade, like the I terminal, said, themes. Like I said, too much choice, overwhelming choice. Now, now uh, when it comes to my personal opinion, I, it, I say that it depends on the distribution. Because I take this website's argument of where Linux is just a kernel. When we're talking about choice, I'm talking about the distribution. What distribution are you running? Is that distribution giving you choice? Is it not giving you choice? Gen 2, for example, is the ultimate in distribution that gives you choice because you're choosing every fucking thing. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up, Josh. <laughs> Linux, right. Linux from scratch is looking at you right now like, mm. Linux, Linux from scratch is not a distribution. It's just yeah, a book that tells you how to make a distribution. Uh, it, it is, is not true. a distribution. If, if we're going to be clear, if you want to install anything that has a large dependency tree at all on LFS, it, it could take you, it, it could literally take you 
over two to three weeks to compile and install just Cade Live because now, of its dependency tree. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the immutable distros. But let's not look. Let's not look at the immutable distros yet. Let's look at the uh, distributions that are basically almost immutable. Uh, so well, I'm talking about stuff like uh, your OpenSUSE micro OS, which is which is not an immutable distro. It's just doing very fancy things with ButterFS. Now, when you install microOS, you it gives you two desktop environments. You got KDE Plasma and you got GNOME. Now, uh, when you boot into the environment, you're booted into a read-only snapshot of the file system. That that's that's how microOS actually works. It's how it functions, and uh, you're just doing ButterFS magic to be able to uh, make it make it a more mutable system. Now, you can theoretically remove the desktop environment that that you installed with it, but the pains that you have to go through to get it completely removed, that way you can have as pure a Plasma experience as you possibly can, or as pure an LXQT experience as you can, it's just not worth the effort. So at that point, it's ro- it's really better just to reinstall the operating system. Well, uh, to, be, to be fair, Microsoft OS is still fairly new. It also doesn't have the community surrounding it that Silverblue does. So like on Silver no. on Silverblue, the community is much larger and they've solved some of those issues. It also works differently, right? So they've created some, uh, yeah. like, so Ublue is there, and that makes it much easier to rebase to a different desktop environment. So Well, Ublue is really just taking all the Silverblue tooling and just making it right. actually more of a known concept. And, uh, and, basically and how Silverblue better documentation works. Too. Uh, the way that Silverblue works is that, yes, if you're just a desktop user and you installed Fedora Silverblue and you want to change from GNOME to KDE Plasma, you kind of can't. That's it. That's intended because the way that Silverblue operates is that Sil- Silver is that you're really just booting into a container image. It, you, if you go to make it make a uh, Silverblue distro, and if you want to see how I know this, you can go to GitHub.com/slash10leej/slash10leej/slash/htpc uh, because because I generated my own Silverblue image for a home theater computer, and uh, you can, you're basically just write a container file. And in that container file, you just tell it to install all the things you want to have installed, and uh, you post it to a container registry, and then you can just rebase any existing Silverblue instance to that. And that's ha- that's basically how you would make Silverblue mutable. So uh, you can still change Silverblue if you really want to. The question is, good you? And I know that RPM OS tree exists. However, RPM OS tree has a limit to the amount of changes that you can make with it. You can only apply it to a mac- to a theoretical maximum of I think it's like sixty four layers, layers or something mm-hmm. like that uh, through an OS tree. At that point, it's really just better to just be making your own image. Steve, are I love we how boring you. <laughs> I love how me and Steve get like, like I I don't know what Steve's doing, but I know I was distracted. My sister's texting me with a whole bunch of BS, and I'm like, I'm doing the podcast. Leave me the hell alone. I look up, all chats talking about us, how I'm high during most streams, and <laughs> me and Steve aren't paying attention. I'm like, if it helps, Eddie, I'm like, trying to do, I tried to do my best college professor uh, impression because, you know, I can see that my students obviously are not paying attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I He's looking at. He's a, looking at chicken recipes. <laughs> all right. So this this conversation, like I said, did not go where I thought it would go, which is fine. I'm actually glad. Um, my opinion on this is is twofold. First off, the reason why so many people are negative about other people's choices is, be, is because of their fandom towards what they use. Right. Josh, for all of his problems when it comes to distro hopping, is a Gen two fan. Okay, he let. If you were to ask him what his favorite distro is, he'd probably say Gen two. Even if he's not using it at the moment, he'd probably say Gen two. I'm right about that, right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So mm-hmm. he's a Gen two fan. Steve, he's an Arch fanboy. Okay. Nope. Yes, he nope. is. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Yes, he is. All right. You Don't always use him. Arch. <laughs> you made an Arch him. distribution. <laughs> he's, he's an Arch. He's doesn't an arch. mean that I'm an Arch. It uh, doesn't mean that I'm an. No, arch no, 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 no. I, you're, I you're, can you're, use whatever I want. You're you're Whenever taking you, you're taking it the wrong. You're 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 getting defensive. It's okay. Uh, fanboy doesn't mean you you're you're blind to the flaws of the thing that you use. Okay. That doesn't mean like I am. I have become an open Sousa fanboy. Okay. I still think that Zipper is one of the slowest pieces of crap that you can use. Okay. Also, they've been working on parallel downloads since 2016. 
it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> okay, probably not gonna happen. I'm just. Gonna, I mean, they're saying they're rewriting all this stuff. It's. It's just uh, at this point, I don't think Zipper's ever going to have parallel downloads. Which is. I know where. I know where. What I know where you're going with with your whole argument. It's about people. Uh, they. They. They have such uh, such opinions because they love what they use. Well, and they want to have other people use it too, right? If yeah. you yeah. if you're really big into arts, you want other people to and have the same enjoying the enjoyment that you have you know because you, you like it so much and the thing is also is even if you even if what i say is true like you can like i'm sure josh has something negative to say about gen 2 there's something there that you don't like about gen 2 uh, but if someone else who doesn't like gen 2 came to josh and started criticizing everything that is gen 2 he'd get defensive about it and and start rambling on about all the technology people have all the technicalities <laughs> that he has in his brain about how awesome Gen 2 is, he'd go on his feel, right? Same thing with with all the rest of us who are fans of everything. When someone comes at the thing that we like, we get very defensive about it, even if we can admit no. that it's flawed. So that's... No, no, no. Uh, for, for, I'll, I'll, sorry for cutting you off here. Is when somebody tell, uh, uh, comes to my Discord and tells me, uh, I don't like KDE. I don't like the the fact that you selected KDE to to be the the flagship uh, for Zero Linux. Like I like it. You're you're free to to, to not like it. There, there's a lot of choice out there. Uh, you select the desktop environment, the distro that uses the desktop environment that you prefer. Uh, I never defend Zero Linux uh, because I'm the creator. People I know because I know people are gonna say that. Oh, he's the creator. He's gonna defend it until the day he dies. I'm like, no. I'm, I'm you very, do do uh, that, though. Sometimes I no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, well, you, I, yeah. I, I do it. I do it uh, jokingly. I don't do it. Seriously. I still wait the day where he has a where he has a button in his tool to reset all the KDE settings back back to default. That way, I don't have to remove like 500 things whenever I install Zero Linux. Oh, that's coming. Oh, that's coming. Josh, okay. that's coming. That's coming. <laughs> no, but what 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 I'm saying is, I I jokingly say that. Uh, defend uh, uh, I say oh KDE for the win KDE is the best uh, thing but I do it jokingly I never mean it uh, uh, I, you will see on my server I do tell people I like, use whatever works for you like I don't uh, there's a lot there's uh, there's a, a, bi a good friend of mine a, a, a person I do respect 100% he's on my server he's been a friend of mine since the beginning of zero Linux, doesn't use he doesn't even use Linux. He uses Windows because yeah. we, we are uh, we are uh, mature about it. People should use whatever uh, uh, works for them, ignoring anybody's otherwise opinions about that. They should you they shouldn't be bullied into using anything. Yeah. I wasn't bullied into using Linux. I just. I think you should bully people into using stuff, you know, f no, in a no, fun way, no. you know? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even in a fun way. Uh, uh, I, I need to thank, but we have to, we have to address something as well. We need to thank those bullies in the Linux world. Because if it weren't for those bullies, I wouldn't have had the thick skin that I do today. Yeah, thanks, Josh. And, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't have matured to the, to, to, to the point that I am at now. Like, if a person comes to me and tells me, I use a Mac, like, I did use a Mac, and I do use a Mac. I use Windows. I use Linux. I use various versions of Linux. Use whatever works for you. For me, and this is going to come as a shocker for all who, who know Zero Linux, including you guys. When I need to do things and I need stability, I am on no, not on KDE. Uh, KDE, I just... Uh, all right, uh, that's it. it. I'm sorry. Steve's been kicked off the podcast. Um, I I'm just letting you all know this. <laughs> <laughs> but things like that, like the podcast and stuff, th th those are clunky things I can do on KDE. Uh, but uh, when I want... Like I want to sit down and I want to write something without the, the the desktop environment getting in my way. I just boot into zero G or GNOME because zero G is nothing but vanilla GNOME. 
I'll keep no. quiet about how I use GNOME on everything except the desktop computer right now. I don't care uh -uh. if people... Oh, okay, so hold on a second. I have come across in the past as anti-GNOME. Tyler thinks I'm having a love affair and also having GNOME's babies. Um, yes, that's not, that is that's, happening. That's not people. True. It's all <laughs> joking you here. You we're, we're, we're friends. We're 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 we're, we're I don't here. hate GNOME. I just don't use it. So I, I so let, let's kind of see if we can pull the conversation back towards that, shall we? There, there is a it, it's a disease amongst. It's not a disease. It's uh, that's too hard of a word. It's a, it's a trait amongst basically everyone, no matter what you're talking about. But let's just focus on the Linux community. It's a trait of people to find something that they enjoy and it's, it's especially true in the, in the linux community because we we tend to consider ourselves a community and we tend to tribalize into certain aspects right so we have the arch guys we have the gen 2 guys we have the open Suze and fedora and ubuntu guys right so sounds like the political sex in lebanon yeah <laughs> right so you know, we we have these groups of people and they're, they're all very passionate about the things that they use but they're also but i think what we tend to forget as people who, who are passionate about certain projects is we're all very much like this with windows or uh, well, i mean with linux towards people who use windows you know, we're all so we tend to whenever tyler uses windows like he did today there was a part of my brain that says oh everyone my in the chat becomes missionaries and they how, must save my soul how Dare, me. <laughs> I mean, how dare he record a Linux podcast on a Windows install? And he's done it multiple oh. times. Also, he was like an app. He was an Apple fanboy for like 30 seconds. He bought all the Apple stuff. <laughs> hey, look, I literally bought a Mac Mini and it bricked itself updating. <laughs> I'm not really all that much of a Mac <laughs> fanboy. I'm just saying he he had all the Mac stuff for like half a minute and he recorded at least one podcast from all of his Mac stuff. Last week he recorded the podcast from an iPad. So <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying there's a small part of my brain that when he does that pisses me off because how dare he? <laughs> how dare he be it's, like it's that? It's now embedded. No, no, it's it's <coughs> been happening for so long and we've been in this environment for so long. It's becoming part of us. It's uh, we we're starting to to to, to have uh, like uh, auto responses uh, following the rest of the uh, it's like the linux uh, community is like society basically right now it's like the the longer you're within this society the uh, the longer it's going the the more it's going to rub off on you and the, the more you're going to start acting like uh, uh, like them i think it's just it, normal all right like you've got well, people that do hang different on a stuff second here. You. hang on a second here josh tyler. has something to say <laughs> tyler tyler this is important. This is important. Take it over, man. <laughs> we're, we're almost an hour in on a recording, and nobody knows how to shout at you yet. Oh, that's perfect. No, yeah, that's true. That's true. We need to fix that. <laughs> well, we need to fix that. So uh, if you guys go to the linuxcast.org slash contact, that is how you find all of our contact information. You can shout at Matt directly at email at the linuxcast.org. Make sure you send all the angry emails to him. <laughs> Did you just kick him? <laughs> No! Where did he go? He just ruined up all the transform. T <laughs> oh man! Did we just piss Tyler oh, off? Oh my god! <laughs> he went offline. All uh, right, all right. Uh, anyways, I'll, thank I'll, you, continue, Josh. I'll I'll continue doing the contact information for you. So, uh, if you guys want to attempt to contact Zanny and find out where he went for us, uh, you can find him on YouTube.com. OG. Uh, in the meantime, you can find my universal contact information at tenleyj.com slash stalker, because we all know that if you want to find me, yeah, you, you got to be a bit of a stalker, because I don't have that big of a platform. Uh, Steve, Steve, you're on Fostodon, right? Uh, it's like yeah. that at zero Linux, uh, so it's fostodon.org sl slash at zero Linux. That, that will take him to your profile. If you need to shout out him directly, you go to at zero Linux at fostodon.org uh, through uh, your Mastodon instance, and you can contact him directly. Yep. What the hell happened to that? <laughs> Who I knows? But uh, I don't know. We have, uh, we don't know. But there is a fact of the week. Did you know that by the year two thousand, there were over one hundred distributions to download? Stall. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did Tyler? Did, uh, Tyler, Tyler? Did you rage? Uh, did you rage quit? 
No, uh, Windows just blue screen, and I'm going to blame whoever the hell is the last person at this call to mention the fact that I was running Windows. That's what did it. <laughs> well, 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 so Josh interrupted you, and all of a sudden you just went by. Like, oh my god, he just rage quit. We're never going to see him again. Also, I, I, now, now I have to hang up because my camera's completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry it's fine it's we're just gonna blame bill gates all right so it, it is his fault so. uh, uh give me just one second i will see if i can't fix my yep, camera yep 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 stuff going on i was uh, like what the hell is this <laughs> now we see yeah technical difficulties all right um this is gonna this is gonna be a horrible podcast because I, I'm pretty positive that um, yeah are all of our are, are all of our webcams black now? Yes, yep, nobody can see us. That means that we can that means that we can strip. <laughs> Thank God! Oh. Hold on, I'm taking my shirt off, dude. It's been it's been a hot yeah. day, dude. Who the fuck needs pants here? All right, <laughs> let's see here. It'd be absolutely hilarious if just all of the webcams came back and I'm and I'm just sitting there shirtless. <laughs> like, oh, whoops! <laughs> all right. Uh, it's so, fine. This is an audio show. Nobody needs video anyway. Uh, except for I've been trying to make the video good. <laughs> is my uh, it do, it doesn't really matter because uh, Tyler, you said Windows completely crashed, right? Yeah, dude, it was a pretty messed up blue screen. It was bad. So your recording's not going to be there. So um, we're oh, going to be. I, oh uh, the, 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 We're not going to be having any good audio this week either. So. <laughs> oh, 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 we're starting to get cameras again. Oh, I am we're working on if it. If I lead, I think I think I'm going to lead. Wait, yeah, yeah, I'm leading the correct way. I can get in. How can oh, I get OBS is... to grab my camera again? I think. If Discord cra grabbed, like if OBS closed and Discord grabbed it, you're gonna have to completely close Discord. Uh, you and need to kill Discord and OBS, and then well, uh, no, uh, OBS no. should capture it back All if right. you completely close Discord, and <laughs> okay. you can reopen it. Uh, oh, tum tum Tumbleweed's fantastic, Cloudy Tuba. First off, fantastic name. I love Cloudy Tuba. That's a great handle. Um, tumbleweed's fantastic. This is not a tumbleweed problem. This is fucking Tyler's problem. And that son of a bitch is going to pay. <laughs> look, look. It's not a Tyler problem. It's a Bill Gates problem. Bill Gates hates <laughs> our Linux discussions. And he's like, you know, he's finally taking action See, to stop us. Somewhere in the back of Josh's mind right now is, is like, Josh says, I made him a, a V4L loopback video. Why isn't he I using did. V4L loopback? I know, uh, right? You can do like, cool stuff like this. <laughs> if, he, if he was using the thing I told him to use... <laughs> Alright, give me just one more second, then we'll, we'll carry on. Alright. Um, All right. Dubai? Steam Deck. Oh, Steam damn. Deck. You need to be in Dubai, dude. Uh, Wait, so right. when are you going brother. to Dubai? Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for my brother to send me the ticket. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, to the people who are watching on video, I apologize. You won't be able to see me for the rest of the podcast. It's just the the oh. right now my um my my camera is not even on. So <laughs> no, I'm not rebooting. I'm, we're not. We're just gonna carry on and see if we can't. Oh, we're not. This. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be seeing your beautiful face. No. Um. Uh, and the view should go up. Should. That right. absolutely <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> uh, anyways, I got everybody else back to the, where they're supposed to be, but um, my uh, camera is just not working anymore. You can you can do what you can do in OBS is uh, click the eye to, 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 to disable it, click it back mm -hmm. on, or right click properties, select uh, something else, then reselect the camera. Sometimes that bo boosts it back up. No. That's fine. Okay. Um, something's going on wrong, wrong there. It's it's when when I unplug, see, unplug, see, replug. What what what? I'll I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, Ty, when I thought Tyler rage quit, I switched to the three man, uh, scene. And when I switched to the scene, the other scene, it fucked everything up. <laughs> it's fine. All right. I, anyway, so we did the. <laughs> Josh was trying to do me a favor, and he was trying to do the contact information so uh, i i went through the whole spiel okay. as as long as you've been sitting in here i don't know if the chat 
I don't know if uh, it made it all to the live stream. Well, I mean, if you want to do the contact information, you can. All of the, all of this nonsense went to the live stream. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Okay, so we're good. So we're good. Let's continue the, uh, right. the discussion. So uh, I have no clue where we were, but I'm going to try to get us back. Anyway, anyway. How about, how about hey, we just hey, do hey, the hey, stop of the it. week and then we Shut can up, get <laughs> I, I, I literally can't have all four of you talk of us talking at the same time. So let me be the host for a moment, okay? Oh, oh okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll regain the hosting duties now that I've finished the, the the you know just listening to a fantastic conversation. Where ha- it did get more viewers. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> anyway, anyways, um, so we were talking about fandom and how people were very um a- associative with the, the things that they use, right? So uh, another way, another direction we could take this conversation. And, and Josh mentioned it earlier because we just kind of bypassed the whole immutable thing. Is that and somebody said this in the uh, um, chat earlier is that the the ch- the choices that we're used to are going to be transferred most have have always been for the developers and for the community, right? So you can choose what distro you want to use. You can choose what desktop environment. All these things, right? You've had those choices, and also. Going parallel to that, all the developers have had choices to what they want to work on. That's the reason why we have forks of literally everything. You know, if if you if uh, you don't like what uh, if you don't like GNOME three, you go create Mate, right? If you don't like one thing, you just go create another thing that's based on the thing that you don't like and just make it your own. Those choices ha- are some people argue being taken away when we move towards this immutable future that we're, we're going to be having. So my question to you guys is this, do you think in the grand scheme of things, we don't need to get into the technical details of Josh did. Um, do you think that immutability takes away, actually takes away choices from the Linux community or do you think no. that, what the fuck? <laughs> I wasn't watching. I looked back. What the hell's got on your face, Steve? <laughs> why, why are you snorkeling? Snorkeling goggles on. It's just yells no. <laughs> I'm so confused. No, it right does. Now. It does not. It gives too. It adds too much choice where there is already too much. Okay. Damn it! I love this podcast. It's great. <laughs> Aren't you glad you got up for this, Tyler? <laughs> yeah. Didn't I say this is the best podcast on the uh, Linux podcast on the internet? Two clowns, Aucho and the, the the weird kid over here. Uh, so yeah. So uh, uh, but anyway, to be back uh, to, to serious stuff, the uh, immunability, immuna, immunabilities thingy. Uh, <laughs> can't pronounce that word. It gives more. It gives really. It doesn't take any uh, uh, choice away. It, it gives more. Uh, it gives more choices. It's like you have so many uh, immutable distros now. It adds to the. Uh, it adds noise to an already noisy environment. That's how I see it. Right. Because well, especially, especially that the immutable distro distros. Some people describe them as beginner user friendly. Yes, they can be. But they're not really. It depends. If you give it to your grandma, of course, your grandma's not going to click away and do things. But if you give it to, uh, uh, to somebody who likes to tinker but doesn't know anything about Linux, he, they're going to blow it up. It's going to blow up in their face. So it's adding noise to an already noisy environment. That, to me, that's how I see it. Dude, people are freaking out in the chat over where the hell is Matt. Um, uh, he killed his camera because things happened. It's fine. He'll be back next week. <laughs> yes, uh, he's been he's been absorbed into a black no, hole. No, 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 no. I might have finally. Had let's it. say the truth. Well, we are truthful. We are truthful. No, 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 no. It's it's called. I finally had an excuse to go up to Michigan. Hold on, his thing is loading. Uh oh, is his camera working now? No. It, it's no. really it's really not okay. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just going on like I I. I'm pretty sure what's happening here is that the the Brio is just c- completely effing confused. So yeah, that's the reason why there's no there's no uh, Matt right now. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> okay, but the, the, we are truthful here. Matt, the reason Matt is you don't see his beautiful face right now 
is because Bill Gates decided to use uh, Tyler's computer revenge for yes. Windows. Bill Gates. Bill Gates is literally Voldemort from Harry Potter. <laughs> That's what Steve it is. Bannon or Satya Nadella. I don't. I don't know any other Microsoft executive names. Oh, I, it, see, you were saying names from Microsoft there, and I don't know who those people are. They, oh, okay, okay. I have no idea. The only person I know from Microsoft is Bill Gates and like Steve Ballmer. Yeah, but he, even him, like, I don't even. Th- is he still even at Microsoft? No. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think so. He's running his basketball team into the ground. Um, <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, all right, so. Josh, what do you think about the immutable thing? Is is it taking away choice? Nah, it's putting choice in a different area that people aren't used to, giving them the perception that the, there is no choice anymore. But at the same time, it's it it there is there you are putting more artificial limitations in the way of choice. But honestly, I don't think that's a bad thing. I agree. Very mature, very mature, very mature answer. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> I disagree right. with that. I think it is taking away choice, and I also think it's pretty. St- Look, there's no PC way of putting this. It's, it's um, gross. Uh, well, not that giving is gross, but I think immutable file systems are gross and somewhat. Because <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Look, here's the thing. When it comes to immutable file systems, they're all nice and fun until oh. you give them to somebody who knows what they're doing. And then and then they're like, I don't. Why? Why does this thing not want to let me do something basic in my own in my own file system? And then, oh like, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah. This, is, this is this is where I was headed with my uh, when I said if you give it to grandma, okay, fine. But if you give it yeah. to someone who knows what they're doing, they're going to be confused. The problem, yeah. And well, I mean, I think a lot of distributions that are like, my, all right, look, as I was joking there, obviously, but uh, but at the same time, when it comes to immutable file systems, I don't. I think I think immutable file systems should definitely have a place in linux they're really good for a lot of things and most of my issues with immutable file systems not being like distros that were using them not like directly stating it like front and center that they are immutable file system isn't really fair anymore because most immutable file system distros are like you know they they proudly tell you about it and it's like it's one of the main things on their website or wherever. So that's not really much of an issue anymore, but there were definitely when immutable file systems were just hitting mainstream, there were a whole bunch of distributions that were an immutable file system. And like, you could easily go and download it and never know it was immutable until it's installed. And that can definitely throw you for a loop. But, yeah. And yeah. With, where your argument uh, also have proof for your argument is team deck. And I know what I'm, well, I'm a tinker. I have a dis- I maintain a distro and everything, and I know how to use Linux somewhat. Uh, so, first thing I did on the uh, on the Steam Deck, started installing native binaries instead of Flatpak because those packages w- didn't exist as Flatpak. No machine, uh, the tool I use for remote desktop management, because I access the Steam Deck on this computer. Okay, so I want to I want to pa- put a pause on the conversation <laughs> right now because the chat's chat's thinking that I'm getting a headache for the conversation. No, I'm actually <laughs> upset that Tyler has a linuxcast.org email address and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, I didn't know I had one. <laughs> so, this is news to me. No, 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 hold on, hold on. It doesn't exist, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, that's even it's better. Li- it's literally DevNull, okay? <laughs> Send your cancellation request to a null email. Uh, bo- As I said before, I was joking. Chill, <laughs> chill, chill, chill. Last week he murdered a puppy. This week he's he's oh he, he's anti pride. Next week he's he's definitely going to be a Nazi. Okay, it's 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 a it's a sliding scale with this man. You never know where he's going to land. <laughs> oh boy. Uh- but, uh, 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 my my YouTube channel is so going to get pulled off from YouTube. <laughs> you got know, three strikes uh, for that. Are you already at two? No, I have no strikes, but they don't care. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, no, true. it's the best podcast uh, online, bar none. Uh, uh, so, uh, as I was saying, I have tools that I need uh, because I need to be able to access the Steam Deck when we have power and in, like uh, during lunch. 
I'm up here, but the office is downstairs and the Steam Deck is on uh, when we have power. So uh, I need to be able to access it to monitor some downloads and stuff. So this tool doesn't exist as a flat pack. So I installed it as a native package. Because it's an immutable file system, the Steam Deck received an update and I lost everything. I had to reinstall, uh, reinstall everything and create a... And Josh here pushed me nonstop until I create, finally caved in and created a restore script that will restore everything. Uh, but so, uh, yeah, immutable file systems in the hands of people who know what they're doing, they feel limited. We feel yeah. limited. We, we feel like half the choice, but we can apply that choice because we are being limited by the file system itself because it's immutable. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons that I, I have so many, I wouldn't say arguments, but I have so many confused discussions with Kudu about why he uses like silver blue and immutable file systems everywhere. Because if you don't see him in chat, Kudu is, hangs out with me on Discord a lot, uh, Element, everywhere. He's in chat right now, actually. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen him before, he hangs around all the time. But Kudu knows what he's doing with Linux. And always uses immutable file systems, and always has to go and do like an you know enable a setting so he can go change some shit, and then then go change it. And I'm like, oh, my my confusion is immutable file systems are made for people who don't know what they're doing, so that way you can't break it, right? Like, I mean, that's kind of its purpose. It's actually exactly its purpose. It's great, well, but it if you users. know what you're going to be doing, and you're going to be changing stuff. Why use it? Like it doesn't make that much sense. Exactly. It's like it's like giving you giving you a uh, let's say a muscle car, and them telling you don't soup it, don't soup it up, sup it up, whatever. Yeah. It is. Or like buying a sports car and being like, so how can I make this thing as fuel efficient as possible? <laughs> it's like wait, wait, what the fuck? You want yeah. a sports car? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so yeah, immutable. And by the way, Josh. Uh, I need to thank you again. I keep thanking this guy. I don't know when the day will come. I would not say thank you to Josh. Uh, 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 Zero G is now using Turtle. Yeah, remember that GitHub. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I replaced the other one with that because the other one, when you update something, it doesn't immediately change. You have to hit F five. Uh, <laughs> this one immediately changes. It works, and it just got an update. But anyway, sorry for the for the sidetrack, but. Uh, immutable file systems, not for tinkerers. Uh, it's for people who, who who just want to install it and forget it. Okay. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to do anything. So not beginner users. I'm not saying beginner users. Just users who just do nothing except browse the web like this. Normies is. You have to. Yeah, you could have just said normies, and we wouldn't need the explanation. All right. So. We could probably carry on with us for another half an hour, but I think we've said most of the things that we need to say. But before yeah. we do, I am going to reiterate the fact of the week. So one of the things I wanted to do is kind of put in a fact of the week or the question of the week or something like that that we can kind of put in this section before we move on to the thingies. Uh, this week's fact of the week is, did you know that there were over 100 distributions by the year 2000? Which is just kind of blowing my mind, considering the fact that Linux was created in 1991-ish, right? But it didn't really come out until like 93 and all that stuff. Like it, was a, it was a, you know, alpha version in all the early years, and then we have Slackware and Debian in 93, and then it just kind of exploded. Over 100 distros by the year 2000. Um, and is, how many do we have now? Oh, <laughs> I didn't count that high. I, I literally <laughs> uh, just just uh, look up like Linux distro hierarchy chart or something like yeah, that. that. You'll get this fancy graph that gives you like the yeah. like the primary distros on the left, and then all of the downstream branches of them. Yeah, and it has a, t a timeline. That's how I came up with the hundred distributions. By the way, yep. I, I, that's how I got it. Um, anyways, yes. So just an interesting fact. Uh, something I thought we would do every week before we transition into thingies of the week which we are going to keep on doing because i think that they're awesome so um steve why don't you take us on to your thingy of the week please wonderful thingy of the week i keep talking about it with all retro gamers out there <clears throat> especially because i used to be part of the of a team that used that piece of software uh is long gone by now they quit like a few months ago sad but I'm just going to say, howdy, Patrolman. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, my pick of the week is Pato Serra. Why did I pick Pato, Pato Serra? Because a lot of people, when it comes to the Steam Deck, and when you mention retro gaming and emulation, their first thought, secondary thought, go to either Emu Deck or uh, the other one. Uh, got the name of the other one. Uh, so those are the two choices because those are the two things that people mention most than about when it comes to emulation on the Steam Deck. Uh, Batocera. I prefer Batocera a hundred times over these two uh, because it's an operating, it's a Linux operating system all on its own. You can install on a separate SD card if you have large enough SD card for your ROMs uh, that you legally rip. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, you can flash it on an external uh, hard drive or SSD, whatever, because, yeah, the Steam Deck, you can boot into an external operating system, uh, on, to another operating system on an external drive. So it's completely separate your Steam Deck. It doesn't clutter up your Steam library and you don't have to switch to the desktop mode. You don't have to do all this shenanigans. You just boot into Batocera and you got your library. All you have to do is have your ROMs on uh, on that thing or on an external thing uh, and scrape them. That's all you have to do and run. Everything is pre-configured and ready, ready for you to, to get up and running. And it's a Linux distro. Like, is it an actual that. independent distro? Because I'm not seeing anything that it would be based off of. It's, I think, based off of, off of either Debian or Ubuntu. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know the nitty gritty of which, but it's Debian because it's apt da, uh, apt apt get. Uh, you can use it on Ubuntu as well. So it's one of the two. It's a Debian derivative at, at some it's, point. It's, in life. It's, yeah, it's a Debian derivative. Uh, it doesn't have a desktop. Say. I think they added a desktop at some point. I think it's XFCE. Uh Ubuntu 2204 is what they're based off of. Yeah. Okay. I knew that. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it, it's something Debian. I didn't know exactly what, but it was most probably the, uh, Ubuntu. Uh, but the, the best part of it is, is it's completely isolated from the Steam Deck. It doesn't clutter up anything. You don't have a million things installed on the Steam Deck. You don't have to tinker around just to get things I think it's already preset up. Flash it. You download an image. You flash it. Start dumping ROMs. Scrape them. The scraping part is it takes a while because you're limited to uh, two threads. Because as a free user, you have to donate to get more threads. The more threads you have, the faster your your scraping goes. Okay. Uh, they're also limited by servers and connections. But other than that, it makes your emulation you, you just, it turns the steam deck into emulation heaven that's cool it's just, all right tyler your thingy of the week please uh, <clears throat> uh my thingy of the week is nyquil like all special huh? <laughs> nyquil nyquil oh dude i oh, <laughs> freaking wish i should be sipping some nyquil right now but no my my thingy of the week's pretty simple um it's nothing too special uh daisy it's not an open source application uh, or game at all. Uh, just go on to Steam uh, and search up Daisy. And uh, if you like survival games with like a zombie twist, uh, then definitely play Daisy. Uh, just as a warning to everyone, when you start playing the game, just know you're going to die. You're going to get pissed off. You're going to be like, I don't fucking understand this game because it is a hardcore survival game. Watch a couple YouTube videos on the best strats on how to play the game. It's great. It's great fun. Um, you should come play it with us. Uh, if you don't, uh, we're definitely going to bully you later on. It's totally fine. Uh, <laughs> and look, if you can't afford it on Steam because it is like 40, 45 bucks on Steam, just don't buy it there. Uh, you can go and pick it up for like 25 bucks somewhere else like just search daisy like global steam key or whatever and you'll find it also uh, steam has way, that stuff on sale all the time <laughs> yes they do but if you go there and it's not on sale and they're trying to charge 45 bucks for it just go buy a key somewhere else um just so you know though uh i i will be playing it uh probably tonight on my steam deck uh but i don't have discord or anything else on there so if anyone does want to play it with me you are going to have to hit me up through steam 
So, yeah. Just let just letting you guys know if well, you want to play DC. Hit me up and let me know when you're playing it because I'm not going to play that shit by myself. All right, fine. I'll, I'll shoot you a message. All right. I'll just I'll just try to be annoying. I'll just yeah. shoot messages off into that, the. That's the way to do that. And I'll tell you, hey man, I'm not even at the computer right now. <laughs> Word. Play, play on my phone. All right, uh, Josh, your thing of thing of the week, please. Uh, my thing of the week is actually Ohio Linux Fest, which I am wearing the shirt for last year's Ohio Linux Fest. It is happening next month, uh, September 8th and 9th, which, by the way, is in Columbus, Ohio, you, which means that's within driving distance of both of you guys and not Steve. So you should, you should come. We can hang out. See, the problem with yeah. that is that I had to visit Ohio. And, and the problem Ohio. with that is that I have to visit Michigan to get you a steak. <laughs> I hate If Ohio. I have to go to Michigan to get you a steak, you, to, you can always right. come to Ohio Linux Fest. Land of a How about this? Buckeye. How about this? If someone can cover our tickets, like me and Matt's tickets for it, I'll drive and pick up Matt. And we'll come. Like, I'll drive up to Michigan, pick his ass up, and then I'm we'll go I'm 100% Ohio. serious when I say that I do not want to visit the state of Ohio. Okay? If it was the Indiana Linux Fest, I'd go. Okay? Well, but Ohio? What's your problem, man? Ohio, Ohio? We just go to a nice, we just go to a nice <laughs> hotel. You know? Well, I mean, if we're going to get canceled over anything else, I might as well just bully Ohio into non-existence. <laughs> uh, Ohio does deserve some good bullying. I do agree there. That's, that's now, true. come on, come on, come on. Michigan, Michigan is the front line for the Canadian invasion. Uh, Kentucky, is Kentucky is uh, like this, in, in okay? the way of keeping me away from all those crazy Alabama people. Michigan, the home of the, of the northern rednecks. We got it. No, no, no. <laughs> come on, man. You, you've seen them Canadian, like... You know the the they're like mounted horse units. Supposedly the the best. I don't know if you guys like, know this, but we're surrounded by lakes. Those fuckers don't know what to do with water. Okay, <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> You're surrounded by lakes. Send me some water, please. We're dry over no, here. No, you can't. It's, it's not good water. You, you don't want it. <laughs> you can't have it. It's ours. <laughs> My water's got algae from Michigan farm runoff. <laughs> okay. By the way, guys. By the way, guys. I want to ask some of you. Some of you. Not yet, because Tyler's got a thing of the week, too. Okay, well, Tyler, technically, Matt does, saying. but still. I was about to say, I thought I said that. <laughs> what do you we have to say, Steve? can't even see you. You don't matter. Yeah, I'm not even here. <laughs> okay, Groucho, do your thing of the week, because I have a question to ask, and the viewers as well. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what my thing of the week is. <laughs> oh, it's Cine. By the way, if you are interested in using Matrix, but you don't want to use the crap that is Element, use Cine. It's much better. Uh, it doesn't have voice calls, so you won't have to. You won't be able to talk to people, but you're all fucking loners anyways. I don't know what the hell you're... I mean, <laughs> seriously. Um, why do you actually want to talk to people? That's just completely lame. Um, Cine mm -hmm. is text-based only, which means you never have to jab with anybody um and you can just go check there and, and lurk as much as you want which is what i've been doing i don't actually talk on there i just lurk um but there are people in the in both uh my dis my matrix and tyler's i just i just read their messages um you guys are fantastic for keeping it uh you know alive um but i'm not going to talk to you <laughs> i do have to agree on your choice because uh element is a it's a doo-doo oh it, it's it's garbage dude it is bad it is it is, it is. Uh, I tried Cine, and damn, Cine is so clean in comparison, so clean. Yep. I it's, think you would really like Enheco, Steve, because it, it, it integrates with KDE theming very nicely. What's it called? Enheco. N-H-E-K-O. Can't be a KDE okay. application if it doesn't start with a K. Um, just <laughs> those are the rules. It's got a K in it. It's got a K in it. <laughs> All right, uh, Steve. Real quickly, what was your question? Okay, my question to all y'all uh, is, um, please help me. Uh, I I I can't figure out what laptop to get for, for Linux. Think and bad. not uh, not 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 two thousand dollars, please. ThinkPad <laughs> used ThinkPad. Seriously. Cool. <laughs> no, but I need something powerful enough to be able to compile Zero Linux. <laughs> Used ThinkPad. Seriously. <laughs> a T470? Really? Probably be nice. You just doesn't even have to be a T470. It could be like a first gen car, car X1. Yeah. Or something like yeah. That. What? what price are we talking about here? Like uh, you can... Four, like three to like $500 somewhere in there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. If you can find them. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I've I've seen them on okay. eBay for like three eighty nine. Yeah. Oh. Like so 
the thing about ThinkPads is that they they are made for business users, which means that they that they are relatively powerful, and uh, be, as they're never really intended for like a consumer product, they have amazing Linux support because they they the ThinkPad is the is technically the developer machine for a lot of software projects, which means oh, that yeah, it's got. Also, if you have to replace a piece of hardware in it, like a keyboard or something like that, it's like the yeah, easiest thing you'll ever have to do. Yeah, but uh, is it powerful enough to compile zero Linux on? Like uh, we're talking. Yeah, like, yeah, you can uh, compile on it, no problem. What do you think I was compiling yeah. zero Linux on last time I was messing around? Just, with zero just Linux? make sure you get a, a fairly modern CPU, like one that's three or four years old, and get enough RAM. I mean, seriously. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Ryzen. I mean, you can do Ryzen. They they so, have older Ryzen. They've had done had they've had Ryzen versions for quite a while. So they have used versions all over the place oh, for thank Ryzen. Thank you. Thank you. I was yeah. thinking the one the one I found was Lenovo IdeaPad Pad Three something. Uh, it was like Ryzen Seven Fifty Seven Hundred U and eight gigs of RAM and. Uh, well, it's, it's an APU. Uh, APU. The, the <laughs> biggest, the hold on, the biggest thing that you're going to have to keep in mind is when it comes to AMD, everything is shared. If you're going to get an AMD processor and you only get an eight gigabyte model, you're fucked when it comes yeah. to being able to. No, I'm like, going to upgrade the RAM. Uh, no, I have I have RAM sticks in the. In well, the office that downstairs. and yeah. and honestly, I I still think that Intel CPUs are a lot more refined in power management than than Ryzen because the only yes. time that Ryzen is more efficient than Intel is under load. When yes. it comes yeah. to idle and suspend states, the Intel yes. the I don't the use Intel... suspend states. I don't use suspend states. Do I, you close burning. your laptop? <laughs> no, yes. not when yes, it's on. Yes, you do. Not when it's on. I just turn it off. Shut down. You're okay, weird. Well, that that is an option too. <laughs> but when it comes to idle power consumption, which I'll be honest with you, even on light. Even on the laptop that you're using, you're probably going to spend a, a lot more time idling than what you think. The Intel is still much more efficient than than Ryzen CPU. Oh, as we'll long see, as we're talking uh, about like post gen tenth generation. Uh, after the podcast, send me names <laughs> of models that you that you that oh, you recommend. I'm sorry, we were talking about ThinkPads and shit, and somebody in chat was like, "Aren't they Chinese?" I'm like. Uh, brother, <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but like computers in general come from China. If 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 you can find a single American-made laptop, well, I would. I mean, Josh, they exist. Nor of all things, they are not x They are not x eighty six, but they do exist. So it's not even a real laptop. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but thank um, you guys. Thank you guys. After the podcast, send me names of models you recommend. Uh, I want to look at them, and I don't buy used. I will never buy used. I, I, I it's too good. No, no. I no. suffered <laughs> multiple times. Yeah, Seriously. We're talking used. Buy used. We're talking used in Lebanon. No, no. no, no. We're talking used I mean, in Lebanon. It, 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 it might be a market reasoning as to why he's stating that. Just that's let him true. explain yeah. explain why he doesn't buy used. Yeah, that's a good point. Because here in Lebanon, when you say use, uh, imagine like uh, the, the, a person advertising a slightly used car with minor dents. And uh, when, when you go to buy the, uh, the car, you, you see it completely total. Yeah, it's been in a junkyard for 18 years. Yeah, it's exactly. real beat up. This, yeah. is what, what, yeah. this is what we call used in Lebanon. It's missing a CPU. It's missing a GPU because they decided to desolder the damn things. Uh, it's essentially what parts only would be over here. <laughs> it's like exactly. it's like it's parts only, but oh yeah, all the parts are also because, broken. Uh, so <laughs> I sent some. I sent a friend once to buy me uh, because I saw a listing for a wonderful laptop. Good specs whatever that was like 15 years ago uh it was good price it was like 45 dollars uh and i was like yeah go grab it went he paid the guy the money he took the laptop he brought it to me there was nothing in, inside it battery uh, no hard drive no no nothing it was just a board if you actually had a shipping address, which you could do, I mean, it doesn't matter because you don't have you don't a shipping have address. addresses here. <laughs> we don't have addresses here. You live. <laughs> we have the the blue house with the blue window with the tinted windows next to the. Uh, I don't the cedar understand tree. your country, Steve, but I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that is the Linux cast. Um, wow, what a journey! 
I think we had some fun yeah. here today. You're I hope welcome. everybody had a, a good podcast. had an entertaining time. Um, I think we we're pretty here much, to entertain. I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty sure we offended literally everybody. Um, so yeah, good. Um, I guess I don't know. If, um, I, if I offended if I offended anyone, call me. <laughs> don't call me i won't answer <laughs> anyways uh we record you've this... answered like three times of the thousand times i've called you that's true that is true we record hey, that's this... not fair though because you call me like 16 times in a row <laughs> okay and if you and if and if you want and if you want to call uh groucho over here i have his number i'll i'll post it publicly oh shit ro, ro. nobody has my number it's unlisted i just find your number I bet you you can't. Um, We're in Lebanon. We have access to everybody's databases. <laughs> I thought that was Nigeria. <laughs> well, was that too offensive for everybody? <laughs> no, I, to be honest, I was reading chat. I didn't notice what you said. It just went completely silent after I said that. Uh, uh, anyways. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, that's the historical magazine you write for. So uh, we record this news. live every Saturday at three o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Next week, Josh will be hosting. That should be even more entertaining uh, than literally uh, any other podcast we've ever done. It should be it should be fantastic. So join us now live. Be coming from to you from the iPad uh, from the Steam Deck. Everybody, yeah. ev everybody in the chat right now, just go to a Matt's Discord channel. Uh, pick a channel and just. And then just start shouting just like angry topics that we could talk about next week. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> if it's not Gen 2, it's not a podcast. <laughs> that, that, that has to be our <laughs> sign off. That has to be the sign off. If it's not Gen 2, it's not a podcast. And with that, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Linuxcast. You guys are all awesome. Thank you for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for if you support me on, on YouTube. I also do have Kofi now, so ko ko fi slash Linuxcast. Um, <laughs> don't yell at me, Steve. <laughs> and anyway, uh, you can head over there if you don't want to do the whole Patreon thing. And those of you who are actually on Patreon, will finally, know that, so. somebody agrees with. Um, me. Anyways, I deleted my Patreon like a, a two weeks, uh, a three weeks ago. If Steve would let me fl please finish this podcast, I'd appreciate. <laughs> it. I really, really want to stop podcasting now. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.